All right, so welcome to the first recording of our fifth workshop, which will be all about landscapes. This will mostly be a workshop on geomorphology, uh, describing how uh, the different landforms in landscapes uh, form and what they look like. But because we're talking about landscapes, we also have to talk about the environmental or biological elements. So we will also have a section on biogeography. Of course, humans are an important part of the landscape too, and we will we have already had uh, some workshops on human geography, and uh, we'll have a couple more later on. So, landscapes can be defined in a variety of ways. Most simply, the visible features of the land, go outside, you look around, that is your landscape. But landscapes also define areas. Uh, so you could describe a region as sort of a, a karst landscape or an urban landscape. And, you know, then you can, you know, group landscapes together and say, well, you know, these two areas, they might be in different parts of the world, but they have similar landscapes because, you know, they have similar vegetation, maybe similar topography, uh, similar human element to their landscape. Landscapes have been a theme of the International Geography Olympiad in the past, uh, and it is important, therefore, to understand both the natural and human elements of landscapes. How are landscapes created? Well, five main factors that influence landscapes, both in terms of landforms and vegetation and human element. First is tectonics. Uh, tectonics, of course, uh, can you know create mountains, rift valleys, things like that. So it's very important in certain areas, like the Rocky Mountains or the East African Rift Valley. Other areas are less tectonically active. Second is climate, uh, both in terms of temperature and precipitation. Precipitation can, of course, speed up erosion. Temperature and precipitation, of course, influence what sort of vegetation is in a certain area. Temperature and precipitation also, of course, influence the type of weathering uh, you get in a certain area. Topography, also important. Uh, the steepness of your slope, you know, impacts erosion and also what can grow there. Elevation impacts what can grow there as well as different weathering and erosion processes that happen uh, at different elevations due to different climates at different elevations. Also, the way your face is, your slope is facing impacts, again, climate as well. Uh, impacting vegetation, impacting weathering, for example. Geology is important. What your rock is made of impacts the rate at which it weathers. It also impacts the types of nutrients you find in the soil, and thus what can grow in a particular area. Uh, for example, the pH of the soil might be impacted by your geology. Also, you know, geology has an impact on local building materials, so you might get certain types of buildings built in some places, but, you know, not others, depending on what material is available, especially uh, in historic times. Lastly, biology. Uh, vegetation can influence a uh, landscape quite a bit. For example, uh, coniferous trees, their needles are often quite acidic, so they'll change uh, the pH conditions of the soil and thus the other life that lives there. Deciduous trees, are uh, their leaves are not acidic, really, so they don't uh, uh, create sort of acidic environments like bogs, for example. Human activities as well. Um, we could group ourselves into biology. We are, you know, biological creatures after all. Um, human activities more and more have a significant impact on landscapes. Many papers have said that we move more soil around the earth than 
you know, all natural erosional processes. We build things. We impact the chemistry of of nature. Uh, you know, plastic pollution, for example, our our impacts on the world are far-reaching and should not be ignored.